All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about comedian Owen Benjamin and how he let cancel culture consume his life and basically destroy his career and why you never really hear from him anymore. If you remember this guy, he had a pretty good career going for him. He started getting some big movies and TV shows and it looked like things were really trending upwards for him. He was also friends with Joe Rogan and he went on his podcast and he was starting to be a regular guest on there and he had his own podcast. So it looked like he's gonna be part of that whole LA comedy podcast scene and just go that route where you just do everyone else's podcast promoting your own podcast and you just coast from there. But instead he just got way too caught up in the whole culture war and politics and cancel culture even too much for Joe Rogan. That's how you know when it's bad. You know, Joe loves to talk about that stuff, but Owen Benjamin was even too much for Joe to handle when it came to that. So eventually Joe had a stage of intervention because Owen was addicted to Twitter and Joe thought he wasn't very good at expressing himself on there. And I don't think Joe really wanted to be associated with some of the stuff he was saying, even though obviously originally Joe was supportive of him. I mean, he had him on the podcast three times and the second time he had him on, it was big because it was right after Owen got canceled and everyone in Hollywood was trying to blacklist him. I think he lost a TV deal. He lost his agent. I think he lost some stand-up gigs. So his career did take a pretty big hit and he's probably done in Hollywood, but a canceled comedian, I mean, that's like a badge of honor. It's nothing to really worry about. As long as you have Joe Rogan backing you, which Joe was, like right after this happened, Joe had him on the podcast. He said he supports him. He agrees with him. The cancel culture stuff is out of hand. So Owen got canceled because he was on Twitter tweeting about this NPR host who had a child that I think was like three years old who they're allowing to transition and he's talking about how messed up he thinks that is i think he called it child abuse you know i don't have the exact tweets here but it didn't seem like he said anything that extreme i think most people would kind of agree with him but obviously in hollywood you're not allowed to say that kind of thing and this was pretty much at the peak of cancel culture so joe had owen on to talk about the whole situation and talk about being canceled so so uh there was this this guy and uh who has a uh three he had a three-year-old boy that he claimed was transgendered and uh, identified as a girl and uh, started, you know, planning on giving them hormone therapy so they don't go through puberty. And this dude has like power in Hollywood, you know, and and um, and I just called him out and I, I got swarmed and uh, I just didn't stop because I'm like, I'll die on this hill. Yeah, like, that's a hill to die on. And so long story short, I make these uh, problematic statements and then my uh, agent drops me. And, uh, yeah, how did your agent drop you for saying a three-year-old shouldn't be given chemicals that kill his <laughs> dick and balls? Because I was rocking the boat, man. And it's mm -hmm. like uh, this college, UConn dropped me. I, I had a, like a good gig, and they said uh, because of your views, uh, uh, we can't, you can't work here. And then did they specifically talk about which views? Yeah, I even tweeted the email because I was sick of this shit, but man. Which views? The trans kids. It's only trans kids. <laughs> That's my whole thing. <laughs> but it's. Trans babies, dude. It's tot. They're toddlers. They're like three, dude. It's, and and I I'll die in the hill, man. I even asked my brother, I, like uh, my buddy, That's a hill uh, to die on. like dude. I literally was like, I'm I'm unemployed, and he had me like read. Uh, uh, that's when you know your friends are, man. He's like, yo, will you read this? You can be like a DA in this fucking murder podcast. I was like, great. He's like, I'll throw you some cash. I thought I was out. I'm like, brother, can I do some more tree work? He's like, twenty an hour. You got boots. I'm like, but think about that that you as a guy who I've known for a long time has been a successful professional comedian are really always that close to being pushed aside and not given work anymore over something that's totally logical. More Dude, I just got in a development deal with, at, like, True TV and shit. It's not even like I was doing badly. Did they? Did True TV keep the development deal? Or did they bang? Dude, I don't even have reps anymore. But do you talk to True TV? No. Like, hey, it's Owen. No, they're cool people. I, I just have, I've just been so like so the reps all abandoned you by saying that you don't think three year olds well yeah and, the, be and trannies yeah and also I guess Sorry, I was folks, I was saying it uh it was line, like problematic trannies. you know I was uh I was I was uh, too many too much I was just I was poking people that aren't allowed to be poked this, this these powerful middle managers you know so obviously it is pretty crazy to have your whole career taken away just like that. And I can understand him being worried about how he's going to make money now and what he's going to do. But again, there are a lot of other opportunities out there and getting canceled as a comedian, then going on the Joe Rogan experience to talk about it. That's going to help you promote yourself better than anything you do in Hollywood, really. And then you can just go do your own thing. You don't even need to deal with that anymore. So it's pretty much a blessing in disguise for some people, at least. It didn't really work out like that for Owen, but... For example, like Shane Gillis getting canceled and not getting the SNL gig, I'd say that ended up working out pretty well for him. Him getting canceled and not getting that job is probably the best thing that could have happened in that situation. If I get fired here, whatever, I'll just go do Joe Rogan next week and I'll be fine. Anyway, I thought that was funny. No? What? 
I was like, I, I literally that what you thought. I literally thought that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it'd be funny. Well, it could have been funny. Yeah. I was booked up though. No, it was fine. I, it was just funny to <laughs> truly. That was a conversation I actually had. Really? Like Shane obviously realizes cancel culture has only helped his career. He even admits that. But I'm sure at the time it was kind of nerve wracking. Like, well, he's getting canceled. But in the long run, it worked out very well for him. But it sounds like because of that, he doesn't really want to talk about cancel culture since it did help his career out a lot. And he's probably glad it happened. But he's in front of Joe Rogan, so he has to kind of bash it. Like right here, he's trying to explain why he doesn't want to talk about it. And he calls himself a victim. But while he's saying it, it sounds like he's debating whether or not to say that or say that I'm somebody who benefited from it. Here's what's uncomfortable about it is I don't want to sound like it's weird for me to rail against cancel culture because I was a, a, a victim of it, for lack of a better word. You know what I mean? Why is it weird for you to rail against I don't know. I don't know. I just, it, it makes me. It seems defensive? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'd rather just be like, look, if people bring up cancel culture, I'm just like. Honestly, I really believe it's better for you in the long run. I really do. You're a brilliant comedian, and I think your sketches are incredible, and I think it's better that you not get attached to something yeah. that's ultimately corrupting. And I don't want to be on the other side of it where it's like, I'm a free speech guy. I'm a fucking. It's like, dude, I don't want to be involved in any of this. I right. just want to do comedy. So that part at the very end there, that's exactly where Owen went wrong. He had the complete opposite of that mindset. It was not about the comedy anymore. It was just all about politics, the culture war, trying to own SJWs on Twitter. And it was like the exact opposite of how Shane handled his cancellation. Owen handled his the worst way possible, and it completely destroyed his career. And it wasn't even directly because of cancel culture. It was just the way he handled it all. Like once somebody told him not to say something or do something, he just wanted to do it a billion times more and he didn't care what it would cost him. It was like he just wanted to offend as many people as possible and say the edgiest things possible so then he'd get banned eventually and then he'd act like a martyr for comedy and free speech and then he could complain about how censorship is bad and cancel culture is out of control. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy and eventually you're going to offend everybody and nobody's going to have to defend what you're saying and then you're just going to be left by yourself. It's like he just wanted to be in a perpetual state of being canceled he never wanted to move past it he was just obsessed with it and joe he tried to talk to him about it one podcast and maybe he went about it the wrong way a lot of the comments actually were sticking up for owen they were saying like this is a backhand move from joe or something but i think he realized where this was headed like owen was obsessed with being on twitter and he's tweeting the n-word like every other day and you could tell it was just gonna get worse and worse from here but Joe, he didn't really help out here. It seemed like it only made things worse. So maybe he could have handled this a better way. But I think he needs to do this with Jordan Peterson now. He never will. But Jordan Peterson, somebody needs to tell that man to take a break on Twitter. He's obsessed with it. He's obsessed with the anonymous troll demons. They definitely got the best of him. Um, I wanted to talk to you about social media. Okay. Because I, I love you. I, I love you too. I think you're a very good guy. I really do. But you are the worst representative of yourself on social media. I'm a bad it's, lawyer it's, it's myself. A, it's a bad form of getting out tricky ideas. It's a bad form. It's just right. not good. You know, you have to really think about what you're saying. It's like you're yelling like as you're falling into a well. You yeah. have like one sentence. But you you are without a doubt addicted. And I know you bailed yeah. on your phone for a while and you went to a flip, flip phone. Flip phone, yeah. But I see these manic tweets from you, and I, I just want to go hang out with you and go, dude, what are you doing? Like, yeah. why are you constantly tweeting? And attacking people and it's like sometimes the chaos helps me you're right i mean you're right right <laughs> like i'm not challenging that statement but like i see it as almost like a idea sonar where you're just like i i get that i get yeah. that but i get that because i know you and yeah, i know yeah, you're yeah. a really good dude in real life thanks man so when i see this online and i i see these blurting outpost just outbreak posts they're just they're just like, blah, like you got <laughs> mental diarrhea. I mean, just let me see if I can throw the word in there for a goof. Let me see if I can, right. you know, say something that's going to piss people off. And it's just, there's this weird thing you're doing, like this Jesselneck thing. Like you just yeah. decided to attack Anthony Jesselneck. No, I'll tell you this. Did he attack you? No, what happened was someone said that uh, they had heard I, he said I was alt-right, which mm -hmm. is like the new insult. People can believe that. They no. could believe that you were alt-right. But if, if but someone tells them it's like and they show, read one right. of your outrageous tweets, 
right. just one or two of them, they would go, oh, this guy's an alt-right comedian. And then they see you with certain people that you've had podcasts with and talked to that might also be lumped in. I mean, ridiculously so, like Jordan Peterson. They lump him into right, alt-right. Right, right. No, I got you. It doesn't make any sense, but they do it. Yeah. Like, I mean, look, I've had people on that people think are alt-right. I mean, people, this, like, you should attack someone when they do something really bad. But, see, I'm, but you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. Like, the sheath's sore until you absolutely need it. Yeah. I'm all about that. And I, I wasn't like full attack mode though. That's I, I pretty I was being, attack mode. I was mode-y. being playful. The war has started. You're talking about him getting liposuction, talking about him being gay, and you're talking about uh, you said a bunch of different well, things. No, but about that's him. after he said I was alt. In response, he said that I'm an alt right, third rate piano comic, and I was like, dude, I just did a, a liposuction joke. Mm. It, but the right, thing but is, I'm not even mad at the guy at all. Like, but I, one then you do, again do a terrible job of representing yourself. That's then. a good point because it seems to me, even I had a text you. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I know. And by the way, this? I just want to give you a compliment. Uh, I love that you're more critical offline. Like you're one of the few people right now in this world that's like, how many people are the opposite? They attack online and apologize in the DM. And you're, I just want to say that that's good leadership qualities. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. <laughs> but I'm not trying to be a leader. I just try to be a, a good person. I think right. if you, you have an issue with someone, you should, do, you should talk to them in person if you can, if not on the phone, but that one-on-one, like, this idea that you should automatically blurt out what you think about someone's public mistakes to the rest of the world, to state your position. It seemed like maybe Joe was getting through to him, but obviously this did not help at all. Probably only made things worse because it's just another person telling him what not to do. And he obviously doesn't handle that very well. And he takes that as just another person being against him. And it just seems like he always wants to be the victim of something. Like also on this podcast, he started complaining about how he's banned from performing at some art schools in Chicago and Brooklyn. And I just feel like that shouldn't be a surprise to him. Like if you're throwing around the N-word on Twitter, I don't think those schools are going to have you. What did you get theaters canceled for? Well, I booked um, two art schools. I just paid them to rent it, like the area, and I sold it out myself. And then... They would just cancel saying that I do hate speech or something. What it's insane. Uh, there's one Merritt in Chicago and then Brooklyn School of Music just canceled on me. And I had to switch it that day. Oh, Chicago and Brooklyn, though, are like hotbeds. Well, first of all, Chicago is filled with oh, dude, social jihadis. And I thought I was safe. I, like, I'm a, I'm a piano player. I never I'm like, say SGW. Social jihadist. <laughs> no, dude. And I thought that was like my, my, my safe spot. I like know, I'm like, better. dude, I'm a piano player, Chicago man. Chicago is so full of like... So I think he probably just thought the more he was getting canceled, the more people are trying to silence him, the more Joe would be impressed, the more people would give him praise. You know, I think when Joe told him originally in that clip we were watching about the transgender kid thing, when Joe said, that's a good hill to die on, I think he just took that and ran with it. And he thought everything he did, Joe was going to be there to support it. So I think he's disappointed that Joe was kind of questioning what he's doing on Twitter. And he probably took that as Joe trying to silence him. And now Joe's part of the problem. So this was the last podcast he did with Joe in March of 2018. And then I think soon after this, he moved back to New York and he just started doing his own thing. And I don't think he really does any other appearances now. Maybe he does a podcast here and there, but he's definitely out of that whole Joe Rogan circle. And he started talking a lot of crap about them on this live stream he does. He started trashing Joe and the intellectual dark web, that group he has. It sounds like he hates them now. And some of it's actually pretty funny, some of the stuff he says. Of the people that, that when you're down, they take shots. They take little shots. And when Eric, fuck Eric Weinstein, man. When I lost my Twitter is when he told me I was bad for his brand and that we weren't going to be close friends anymore and I was filled with too much chaos. Oh, you think maybe it's because I don't have 126,000 followers that can help spread your shit? Is, is that maybe not part of it? Or, or you got a little a chill, a little shiver that if you speak your mind that the, the powerful people in Silicon Valley can take it all from me and that made you a little scared, made you rethink your friendships. Which one is it? Because I know it's not chaos because you're friends with J- Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's the most chaotic person I've ever met. Granted, he's very disciplined, but he'll have to, he'll be like, oh, dude, today it's all about freezing your dick and shooting a bow and arrow and taking mushrooms, doing comedy, and then shooting guns. Like, okay, so that isn't chaotic? Oh, wait a minute. It's about, it's about money and power, huh? And not about ethics and not about doing the right thing or any of this shit. But I'm the bad guy, right? You bunch of coward, intellectual dark web, more like intellectual f- web. Bunch of f- oh, don't say that word. I mean, listen. Listen, we're here for free speech and we're here for free expression, but not these words and not this statement. And if you do this, we won't hang out with you. Oh, and never make fun of Sam Harris because he's our atheist Jesus. 
Sam Harris is their leader, by the way. Just know that. He's the guy that they all get scared of. Sam and Big Ears Harris. His mom invented Golden Girls. He's a rich kid from LA. He was born with a silver spoon. Golden Girls, you know how much money that is? You know how much money he was raised with? That's why he could sit for 20 days in a goddamn uh, no talking retreat in the woods. You wanna know why? Because the f is a trust fund. How can you follow Joe Rogan? He's five foot six. What leader? If I was standing in front of Joe Rogan, I would think he disappeared. I would be like, where's my friend Joe Rogan? And someone would be like, way down there. I'd be like, where? No, like men are right here. Like, where's Joe Rogan? And they're like, no, like do that. And then I'd way down, I'd see a shiny, a shiny bald head. And I'd be like, hey buddy. And I know Joe Rogan could beat the fuck out of me. I know he could buy and sell everything I own. I know that he sells out stadiums and I don't. He speaks lies and he's short. Why the f do people all act like money does shit? Joe Rogan is not a leader. And, and I used to follow him. It's just we're so deficient of leaders. He's five foot six. Like, like if, he was on, if he was a king on a horse, would he, like, if they hadn't invented booster seats or, um, or phone books, like, how would the soldiers have seen him? Like, when he was like, freedom, and they'd be like, who just said that? Who just said that? Joe is a bully? He's, of course he's a bully. Of course he's a bully, man. And he's a bully who pretends to be an advocate for the weak. That's why I got so pissed off. It's because I, like, loved him for what he did for me. I loved him for what he said to Carlos Mencia. And then I realized that it's all, it's all spells. And eventually, Owen was banned on pretty much every mainstream platform. I think Twitter, he might have gotten that back. I think Elon might have let him back on there. But I don't think anybody really even pays attention to him anymore. They're just like, what happened to that guy? Like, he fell off the map. So Joe actually has mentioned him a few times since his last appearance, and they're falling out. Like, this was about a year after his last appearance, and Joe started talking about him because Owen was on Joey Diaz's podcast one time, and Joey Diaz gave him an edible, and he took it, and he just couldn't handle it he ended up walking off and he didn't come back and joe thinks that's maybe something that screwed him up when we give owen what did he give owen oh, i think just one he ruined his but life it would have been about 200 to 250 yeah, yeah. Oh oh my God. God. i think i heard that the podcast you're saying like opened 250 the door and went out uh, joey made a video but the, the the day changed owen's life <laughs> like literally f the guy's head up like yeah. he went outside and he vanished he's gone <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, God. God. that's cannabis psychosis <laughs> yeah well i think i think there's a real argument to be made it's particularly with him well but, and then there's another time i'm not 100 percent sure if he's referring to owen here but just the way he's describing it it sounds like it could be him you become someone who is on stimulants all the time and i know several people that have an issue i know one guy has completely lost his mind thinks everybody's against him thinks that uh everyone's done him wrong and he's just out there cracked out in the middle of nowhere on fucking adderall every day and making youtube videos and there's a lot of people yeah. like that man there's a lot of people like that it is a meth like drug it's very 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 similar to meth and then i think he mentioned owen one more time and he was actually defending him still about the whole transgender issue owen benjamin who is just basically is like in a tinfoil hat somewhere and like living off the grid, he offended a lot of people, right? You're just staring at me. Yeah, no, most of them. Oh, uh, and he said a bunch <laughs> of stuff about trans stuff. And I remember there was this girl that I was friends with on social media, didn't know her, but just followed her because I liked her writing. That, and I go, what are you talking about? She was like, he said all this stuff that's anti-trans, and I hadn't heard anything. But well, let me let me say what he said, yeah. okay? And here's the thing: he went off into a spiral, right? But I agree with what he said. What he said was there was someone that he knew, someone who works in Hollywood, that had a three-year-old that they were turning trans. Right. And he said that that was child abuse. That was what led. I don't disagree to with his that crazy situation. Totally. This is. I no. I agree with it a hundred percent. I don't disagree with that. Yeah, I agree I, with him. It's a child. Hundred percent. You wouldn't yes. let that child decide what it's eating. Right. So that aside, and the spiral aside, which I didn't even yeah. participate. Like it's whatever. Like those are your choices. That's what you're saying. I had known but none this, of this. But here's the thing. That cost him dearly. His agency left him, and then comedy clubs banned him for that. That was the beginning. I think he of just it. steered into that skid. Well, that's but that's what started the skid. Right. What started the skid I think was that. There was that. something else about like he called someone who had written a 
look, this that's not the point of what I was well, saying. Things went south afterwards. You have for to sure. manage those things. So that's about it for the Owen Benjamin saga. That's how he canceled himself. He just got way too caught up in the anti SJW movement. It wasn't really about comedy anymore. It was just about offending as many people as possible. And I'm sure there's some stuff I missed. Let me know down in the comments and just let me know what you guys think about the whole situation. And if you like this video, make sure you check out my Patreon. I have a lot of videos similar to this. And then make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you at the next video.